Hello, calculus students. Uh, lots of reasons to learn calculus. Uh, today we're going to talk about a uh, new one. Um, but first, I'm going to pose a question and simply uh, evaluate the square root of 7. Um, that's an irrational number, so the best we can do is a decimal approximation. I'm sure you can come up with something. Um, 7 is between 4 and 9, both perfect squares. Uh, so it's somewhere between 2 and 3. Um, today we're going to learn how to use calculus to come up with a value for the square root of 7 that's reasonably good. So, section 3.10 in our textbook is called Linear Approximations and Differentials. And today we will use linear approximations to find an estimate for the value of a function. Differentials are going to have to wait. So, in order to understand how this works, uh, you have to think about what happens when you zoom into the graph of a curve. Uh, we have talked about that, um, and we know that if we zoom into the graph of a curve, it seems to straighten out. Um, we're going to use that property to uh, come up with estimates for the value of a function. So here you have the uh, square root function graph. The value we are interested in is the square root of 7. So if I put a vertical line there at 7, which I missed a little bit, but if I move it over, we get a pretty good uh, value. Um, <clears throat> we can see if we move then to the left with a vertical line that the value of the square root of 7 is somewhere between 2 and 3, probably closer to 3. Uh, but again, um, we're, we're just guessing at this point. Uh, to show you how this works, we're going to actually take a look at uh, that graph uh, in ZGrapher. And you can see the graph. Uh, and we have the value um, at 7 down here. <clears throat> and uh, I can estimate that with a point. I can select this as a point up here. If I put it on the graph, uh, it looks like it's about 2.8. 637, that's the y value. Um, I can actually move it a little closer, get it a little better. Uh, and if I click on that, we can see it's about 2.655, 2.66 uh, approximately. All right. So the next thing I want to do is if I go up to this button right here, uh, that will give me the equation of a tangent line. Um, and so I'm going to select the equation of a tangent line. I can also do a normal line, but notice I have tangent selected. Um, I don't want it to the vertical line where at 7. I want the uh, square root function. So now I have the square root function selected. And I can pick any x value to get the tangent line at. Um, and it would be hard to find the tangent line at 7 because I don't know what the square root of 7 is. So I'm going to pick a value that's close to 7 whose value I know. So I choose 9. And then if I add the graph of the tangent line, you can see that they are very close to each other, right in here. Um, so we're going to use the tangent line to approximate that value since they are very close. I'm going to close this now. And let's go through that process of using a tangent line. So it's really just four simple steps. Uh, I want to know what the square root of 7 is. So I choose a function, and it may be given to you. And in this case, it is really given to me. I'm going to use y equals the square root of x. I don't know what 7 is, so I choose a point near the value we want, which is 7. Uh, this also may be given to you, but I'm going to choose a value, a, to be 9, because I know what the square root of 9 is, and that's going to be useful. Then I find the equation of the tangent line to the chosen function, the square root of x, at the selected point. I chose 9. And to do that, to find the equation of the tangent line, we need a point. And so the point is going to be, well, we chose 9. And then the value of the square root function at 9 is 3. And then we need the slope of that line. And we find the slope by taking the derivative. So if y equals the square root of x is our chosen function, then the derivative dy over dx is 
1 over 2 root x. You should be familiar with that at this point. And then I evaluate that when x is a or x is 9. <clears throat> so we have, and I'm going to go to prime notation, f prime of 9 is 1 over 2 times the square root of 9, which is 1 over 6. So now we have the slope, and we have a point, and we use point-slope form to write the equation of the tangent line. So y minus the y value, which is 3, equals 1 sixth x minus the x value, which is 9. And there's the equation of the tangent line. And step four, then, is just evaluate the tangent line at the original value. Well, the original value was 7. So I'm going to take that value, plug it in there, substitute for x, and then I can solve for y. So here's my tangent line, y minus 3 equals 1 6, but I'm going to replace the x with 7 minus 9 and evaluate that. But 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So I have y minus 3 equals 1 6 times negative 2. Uh, 1 6 times negative 2 is negative 1 third. Uh, I'm going to add the 3 to both sides because that's what I'm going to have to do to solve here. So y equals negative 1 third plus 3, which is 2 and 2 thirds, which is about 2.6, well not about, it's 2.6 repeating, um, which is very close to the value that we um, were determining before. So this is our linear approximation. So to formalize some of that language, we simply say that we can use the tangent line at A, f of A, so that is some tangent line, as an approximation to the curve, y equals f of x when x is near A. The important thing to remember about this is x is the point we want, and a is the point we choose. But we want x and a to be as close to each other as we can get. So when we find the equation of the tangent line to y equals f of x at a, you need a point which is going to be a f of a, and you need a slope, which is going to be f prime at a. And so then your equation becomes y minus f of a equals f prime of a, the value of the derivative at a, times x minus a. Uh, it's very common to add that f of a to both sides so that you can write this as y equals f prime of a, the slope, times x minus a, plus f of x. And so these two are the same equation, point-slope form in both cases, just written differently. Uh, and very often, because it's called a linearization, instead of using y, we use the linearization of x, L of x is the name of the function. So that would be f prime of a times x minus a plus f of x. Um, this notation just sometimes gets a little confusing and makes it look more complicated than it is. It really is just find the equation of a tangent line and plug the value you want in. So we go here, let y equals L of x be the equation of the tangent line, 2y equals f of x at a, then the value of L at x, the value of the tangent line at x, is approximately equal to f of x. So there is our approximation 
of a function at some point x. So we're going to do another example. Uh, typically, it's stated like this. Find the linearization L of x of a function at a. Use L of x to approximate the natural log of 1.1. So here we are given f of x is the natural log function. So f of x is natural log of x. And um, a is 1. Well, what's that? Well, 1 is a number that's close to 1.1, whose value we do know because the natural log of 1, ln of a, is ln of 1. The natural log of 1 is 0. So our point is the point 1, 0. Nice and easy. Next step, simply find the derivative of f of x. f of x uh, is natural log of x, the derivative of which is 1 over x. Again, that's easy. So f prime at 1, which is a, is 1 over 1, which is 1. It's nice and easy. I write the equation of the tangent line. I've got my point. I've got my slope. So point slope form says y minus 0 equals slope x minus the x value, 1. And that simply works out to be y equals x minus 1. In the language of linearization, we change y to L of x, and we get L of x is x minus 1. So there is our linearization, or the tangent line, at 1. And now we simply go back and remember that x was 1.1. That's the value that we want to estimate the natural log for. So we do L of 1.1, which is 1.1 minus 1, which is 0.1. And we now have an approximation for the value of the natural log of 1.1. The four steps are fairly simple. Uh, things we've done before. It's just uh, using it for a slightly different purpose. Um, we can approximate 2.001 to the fifth power. It's another way this is uh, often given to you. In this case, we do need to choose a function. So I'm going to choose f of x to be something to the fifth power because that's what's happening here. We're having 2.001 taken to the fifth power. I'm going to choose a value near 2.001 whose value is easy to calculate. Uh, how about 2? Very close to 2.001 and easy to calculate because f of 2 is 2 to the fifth or 32. So the point is 232. Now I just need the derivative so I can have the slope and I have my equation all ready to go. So f prime of x is, well, I can just use the power rule on x to the fifth, 5x to the fourth. Now we evaluate that for 2, the chosen value of a. That's 5 times 2 to the fourth. And 2 to the fourth is 16 times 5 is 80. Equation of the tangent line, y minus the y value, 32, equals slope, 80, x minus the x value, um, 2. And I can rewrite this as a linearization. If I add the 32 to both sides and change y to L of x, we get 80 times x minus 2 plus 32. Two. And now if I want the linear approximation for 2.001, I simply plug that in. 80 times 2.001 minus 2 plus 32. And I have continued to evaluate. Uh, that is 0 0.001. 80 times 0 0.001 plus 32 equals... Um, 80 times 0 .001, I can move the decimal point three places to the left, one, one, two, three, so that's 0 0.08 plus 32, 32.08 
is the approximate value of 2.001 to the fifth power. So I hope that was uh, understandable. We'll do more of that in class. Uh, but really, that is it.